Hello friends. In today's video, again we are going to talk about time intelligence functions. This is the third video in the series where I will be we will be exploring uh, time intelligence functions. In today's video, I'm going to talk about date add function. In my opinion, this is a a function is is very powerful and mostly used. It's kind of a queen in chess. It's really a, in my opinion, it's a queen function in DAX time intelligence functions. We will closely look at these fun this function. So let's look at data add, how this works, and uh, what kind of things we should be knowing about this particular function. It's really, really powerful. So let's get to Power BI. So like yesterday, I created a, a measures for date add. Uh, what I did is here I have the actual date. So basically, if I'm in 2017 year, what dates I what the dates? Of course, that's the full range of the dates. If we go one level down, uh, we have a quarter date, as we we can see, and um, first quarter. And if we go month, so now these are the actual dates. The reason why I did bring this up is because then we compare with the other functions how the ranges changes. So let's go uh, back to the 2070. So the date add day function, what I did in this particular uh, function. So date add before we go uh, in, in detail, this, this particular function has three parameters. And uh, uh, if, if we look into uh, here is the function. So date add day. So date add function has three parameter. First, first parameter is of course your dates which is a set of dates which is come from our calendar date and this parameter is really really powerful so this is like do you want to move backward or do you want to move forward right so if it's a negative value you go a, a backward and if it's a positive you go forward and the last parameter is like what we were moving forward or backward but what you are moving like is it a day month week Oh, there's no concept of week in, in here, day, month, quarter, year. So this third parameter is like, uh, if we look at the interval, so there are like uh, three, four options, day, month, quarter, year. So same function. So now it, it, it is so dynamic that you can move backward and forward, but and also you can define the interval you want to move to, right? So in this case, I created four measures, one for date add a negative one, a day negative one month negative one quarter negative one year basically going back uh, minus one given the interval and uh, now if we look into this particular function here uh, what we have is 2017 data range. now what we expect the data at day to do so if we look this range it has moved the set the whole set which is this this is the whole 2017 by one day so the last day turned out to be 30th of December because here is it's moving by one day. So 31st December moved to 30th and the starting date, which is 1st of um, January 2017 moved to 31st, 16. So it moved the whole set in the context in which we are looking at by one day. Similarly, the date add month moved the whole set by one month. So now it went from December 2016 to uh, November 2017. The quarter is again moved the whole set uh, by one quarter so that it moved because why it moved by one quarter or why it is moving by one month or one day because I gave minus one. So moving back minus one. If I give a plus one, it will move forward. So this range will become like in, in the future dates. And um, again with this one and then the year, as you can see, uh, 31st December so it moved the whole set by year so it becomes very very powerful why it is very powerful now you can actually uh, do the comparisons like uh, this year versus three years ago or this year with previous year this year with um, uh, um, you know uh, two years ago uh, how you can do that you can move the dates the way you want it to be you can make it very very dynamic and let, let, let me quickly show because date add year is easy to um, to represent. So here if I go into date add year and I go minus three. So what is happening is my data set will move three years 
backwards. So that's uh, once this uh, changes take place. So yeah, now look, we are in 2017. So now I am moving back three years. So what does it mean 2014? So if, if I want to compare a sales this year, but three years ago, what I can now easily do is a calculate sales and then date add my calendar date minus four years or minus three years and then, then the period which is year. So it's so, so easy to work with. And on top of it, you can make a dynamic. Here, I what I did is I created a, a what if parameter. Uh, let's say if you want to give the user to uh, compare the sales uh, with the year they want to choose, like you don't want them to be only compared with the previous year, but you want to them the option to compare with two years ago, three years ago, or two months ago, or three months ago, or two days ago, or three days ago, or maybe two or three quarters ago, whatever the use case is. So data add functions give us all the flexibility. So what I will do in that case is uh, right now in um, in day three dates, these uh, my years, uh, what I create a range instead of negative one, I can now use my uh, what if parameter, which is move, I think value, right? So that's what my uh, interval, how backward and forward we're going to do. So I'm going to use all the my years and use this uh, uh, what if parameter and then we will take a look at that how does that look like so let's quickly change these uh, right to move value this is the second one so i have a four parameters one to show day month quarter year so the third one is minus one instead of having the fixed value if you're really looking for a solution which is very very dynamic uh, person use the period uh, let's say you are showing the uh, comparison between quarters and you want the user to give the option to use this quarter versus three quarters ago, right? Then you can you can actually with what if parameter, you can instead of creating the measures with the fixed value, uh, you can have the what if parameter. So now here I have, I use the what if parameter value, which is right now zero. And as you can see, all my dates are now exactly the same what they are on the um, uh, uh, what the actual dates are for that particular period in the context I'm looking at. If I move it minus uh, negative one, now of course my whole trend is going to change. This goes back to day back by one day. This is by one month. This is by one quarter. This is by one year. And if I go further back, right two. So then of course it's working. It went back by two years. And uh, if I again I have a negative and positive in my what if parameter. So if I go two years forward. And so now I have a uh, 29, 20, when I'm on 2017, my data set for the next two years is returning what the uh, 2019 is. It's really, really powerful. Um, so th 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 this, I hope, helps you understand how the date ad is so powerful that you want to compare previous quarter or two quarters ago, previous month or three months ago, or whatever the use case is, you can, data ad is, is going to be in center in the middle of everything. Now, uh, uh, there's one small uh, thing which I would like to highlight here and pay attention. So I created a another a, um, a page with the sales, same functions. I'm uh, just the sales um, functions. I'm just gonna show you guys here. So what I have here is a, a day three day at sale. I'm moving by one date, not the, not the, um, um, not the what if parameter, but the fixed minus one interval value. So, um, so this is, uh, uh, I want to make sure that we understand what is happening. If we look at, I'm going to select all the years. If we look at the total level, now the actual sales, there's no function. This is just a sales my year, some sales my year. Our sales is around 30 million. When we are moving by a day sales, it's still 30 million. Uh, now the question is why uh, when we're looking at the month sale it's still 30 million when a quarter is still 30 million but when it went to year it is now a, a some some different number it's it's a 30 million but it's not 92000 it's like 45 uh, so what is happening here what are these numbers so let's say if i don't select 2022 i just um, uh, select 2021 so my total sales for whole 2021 is uh, up to 2021 is 30 million, but here I'm getting all different kind of numbers. What are these numbers? Um, to understand this, we have to go back to our previous page, where is like a, uh, 
I, I intentionally turned off the total in here uh, just to make sure that we see if I put the total again it is all what is in the context when we're looking at 2018 what is date at minus one day or minus um, um, whatever the interval parameter we are using is like what it is uh, returning in the context but when there is we are in the total then what is happening so let's take a look uh, I'm going to put the row subtotals here so now th this is what you see the total so when it is in the total the actual range on the total is 2070 to 2022 right because all the four uh, five years of data uh, six years actually 70 to 2022 so we have a like full year actual date range is now starting from uh, first 20 uh, january 2017 to 31st december 2022 so when we are adding the date add day so what it is doing it is moving back by one day for this particular date range so it moved back by one day here it moved back by one month, here by one quarter, and here one year. Uh, so that's what is happening is when we are looking at the at the total level. So our numbers are a little bit funny and they change in, in any, not funny, but uh, they are based on those dates. Depend what your business need is, what you want to see on the total line, because it might not um, make any sense depending on what you want to do. So when I'm in 2022, so what this uh, date at sales here, I'm, let's go back here and also uh, change it to 20, uh, select all and remove, keep 2021. So my total sales is of course 17, uh, um, January 1st, 2017 to 2021. But when I'm in the day day now, it room, it is from 31st December 2016 to 30th of uh, December 21. So here it removed one month, here it uh, moved by one month, uh, here it moved by one quarter. So that's why these numbers are based on what date range we are seeing on the total level. So that is what is happening there, which is, uh, so the, the, the one should pay attention, like how when you're saying, because it always, I seen as the people say, okay, you know, the numbers are fine uh, at the month level or at the year level and all the stuff, but the total level, they don't know what is happening, what they're seeing, what does this number means. They, they could not uh, get to the point like how this number is getting calculated. If I'm looking at the quarter sale and my 2021, the numbers that is the actually getting calculated is based on the a third, fourth quarter of 2016 till the third quarter of 2021, which is really uh, what, what the sales uh, uh, we are seeing here. Uh, and now uh, just one more thing uh, before we move forward. Uh, also, I want to show like what happens when you're looking at the quarter level. Same thing when we are in a quarter level, we are having the first quarter here, which is showing first three months. Now here it is switched to because we said move the dates by one day. So the whole January 2018 to 31st March 2018 moved by one day. And similarly, this is moved by one, uh, one month. And um, so this is moved by a one quarter. So if you want to compare quarter versus quarter, so this is what what will happen. So it, it and this is moved by a year. And similarly, if we go back and look at the uh, sales uh, comparison here for the sales, so Q1 2019, and the, 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 this number, what I'm seeing here is when I'm looking at the month, a uh, quarter level, the month, the range for the month is totally different, right? It is. So you have to be very, very careful to understand what date range I'm seeing when I'm looking at the quarter level. It is not the full quarter. It is now a December 2017 to February 2018 because we set it to move by one month and our, our data set has moved by one month. So it's very, very important to understand what numbers we are getting when we are using the date add functions and to understand the numbers we are getting we need to understand what data set it is written what date range it is returning and to do that uh, as i showed you so the whatever in the context you are looking at it then that's what we see let's quickly move forward to one other example here let's go to the date level so when we are at the date level so right now, of course, May 1st, we are, the, so actually it is, of course, one day. So now it moved because we are moving the by one day. So going back one day, so this is 30th of 
Now here we are going back by one, one month. So basically what we're seeing is a, 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 the whole date is now showing us the previous month first day. Like if I'm on the second date, I'm seeing the second date. So I'm comparing the same date, previous month, the same date. And similarly, uh, when we are looking at the date at quarter, so it moved the May 2nd by a quarter. So now because we are the fifth, if you go back three months, we are seeing February now. So it is moving. It's a date is still the same, but moved back by three months. And if we are going uh, at the year level, the date is still same. It is still a May 2nd, but it has moved by one year. Why one year? Because we are in 2018. Now we have in here, we use the date at minus one and then the year. So what we said is whatever the date, date set you are looking at this point of time move that by one year so it's not like the whole um, you know full day we are getting the full year we're just getting because in the context we are looking at that part is getting moved back by one year or one quarter of one month and um, so this is what the date add function is it's really really powerful actually in the coming series uh, of this i will be using this date add function with other functions to achieve some of the goals which are common question asked in power bi um, but i hope this helps you understand how you know these numbers are what these means what where they are coming from how they are getting calculated and if you if you look at this number you have no idea what this includes when you're using the date add minus one month right now you know what date range it is calculating and that's how the sales is getting calculating, uh, calculated at the, uh, at the total level. I hope you found this video useful. In next video, I will compare this date add function with other functions like previous day, previous month and the next day, next month, next quarter, next year. How are they the same or they are different? So let's check out in next video how those functions are different than what we, with the date add is. But in this particular video, I just want to talk about date add. It's really, really powerful function. And uh, we will use this function with other functions in, uh, in upcoming videos. Um, until next video, have a great day. Do subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.